Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Blake Bloxham. And I'm Dr. Alan Feller. We're from Feller and Bloxham Medical, and we're doing another one of these forum answers today. This is where we take a question from one of the popular uh, hair transplant forums and answer it. So the question we're answering today has to do with post-op uh, hair transplant care, with basically post-op care after an FUT. So let's read the question here. I had a hair transplant a couple of days ago. There is what looks like a pimple with a white head in the crown area. Should I pop it? I was told not to use alcohol on my grafts, so how can I disinfect the area? Should I use vitamin E on my grafts? Will washing my head twice per day affect the grafts or the scar in any way? So multiple pieces to answer here. Uh, we're going to go through kind of one by one. It looks like there's about four different questions and answer them. So I think the first question he's asking here is he sees something in the crown area, likely where he had worked on a little white head. Should he pop it? My answer to that is no, do not pop it. Chances are that this is just a little bit of a whitehead from the hair that was shaved down growing back through the scalp. This probably isn't a new graft growing in yet at two days unless he's a miracle. Uh, this is likely a hair that was shaved down during the procedure that is now trying to sprout back through the scalp. It's meeting with a little bit of resistance and that's what's causing that whitehead effect. You don't want to pop this. The reason why you don't want to pop this is because your fingers and likely any sort of little tool you would use to pop this is dirty. Even if they look clean, even if the, you, you, you think they're clean, you've got bacteria all over everything. And what you don't want to do is start infiltrating and putting bacteria into these areas where your scalp was just operated on surgically and where you have these new grafts. If this is bothering you, what I would do is use a warm compress, basically a warm towel, and hold it on the area. That's going to help the, the kind of fluid that's accumulating in that white head naturally drain. It'll help the white head naturally open up and allow that hair to grow through. Also, anything like this, just make sure you're double checking with the clinic. You know, you, you want them to be aware of everything that's happening. They may have some questions to ask you. They may have some tips as well. So make sure to double check it with them, but that would be my personal right. recommendation. And the information we're giving you is based on what we would do. This isn't yeah. to say this is what you should do and throw over your own doctor's <laughs> orders. He obviously knows you better than yeah. we do. So, so much for the disclaimer. There you go. Uh, on to the next part of the question, which is I was told not to use alcohol on my grafts, so how can I disinfect the area? Uh, it was disinfected for your surgery. After the surgery, you really don't have to disinfect it per se, but you need to keep it clean and you don't need to use alcohol to do it. In fact, it's probably counterproductive to use alcohol. The best way to clean skin is just soap and water. Mm -hmm. Alcohol in of itself does not kill germs. Now, we all know that alcohol stings when you, when you taste it or you get it on an open cut, and you say to yourself, yeah, it's burning out that infection, but that's <laughs> not really how it works. In the movies, it works that way. They pour alcohol on the body and then they cut into it and do a surgery. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. The way alcohol is used to, quote, disinfect is as it evaporates, mm -hmm. not as a weak acid, which is what it is. It, as it evaporates, or is it a weak base? Uh, alcohol should be a weak base, I always forget I the tip. Whatever it is, it's, it's something, caustic something or it's science, acidity. Something science -y. Something science -y. Yeah. But, but for our purposes, when you were using alcohol to, you know, on your CPR dummy or when you cleaned a, a wound, uh, it's not the alcohol that you're using as a disinfectant. Like we use in our operating rooms, we use real disinfectants. It's the evaporating process that dries out the skin and makes the environment hostile to bacteria. So that's how it works. So if you just put alcohol down, in of itself, it's not useful. You have to wait for it to evaporate. So for this patient to be wondering if he should use alcohol to clean the skin, well, the last thing I think you want to do after a hair transplant is create a drying scenario for your grafts. You don't want to draw moisture out of the grafts any more than you want to draw moisture out of your eyeballs. I mean, that, that's a bad day. So you don't want to use alcohol after surgery. It's, it's, it's only going to dry out your grafts, and it's not going to kill uh, bacteria. The way to uh, clean your scalp is soap and water. It, it pulls off so much bacteria by mass effect, you've effectively reduced enough bacteria not to really worry about infection. Uh, you've done the most you can without hurting the grafts. The grafts do not mind having suds on them no. and then pouring water on them, even a day after the procedure. In fact, we tell our patients, you can go right in the ocean after a couple of days. It's really no problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't use alcohol on your recipient or your donor area ever. Next question here, should I use vitamin E on my grafts? Simple answer, no. Do not put vitamin E on your grafts. Uh, you don't want to put a lot of stuff, period, on your grafts. Like Dr. Feller was just saying, you want to keep the grafts clean. Um, you want to make sure you're not letting a lot of that scabbing 
sort of appearance build up, but you really don't want to put a lot on the graphs. In my opinion, the more stuff you're putting on the graphs, the, the greater the chance you're going to dislodge something. Um, the greater the chance you're going to get something into one of those little superficial cuts that's healing up. And you really just don't want to have a lot of stuff up there in the post-op. You want to keep everything clean. You want to reduce the inflammation of the scalp as much as you can. And you just kind of want to let the scalp heal up. Uh, some doctors will advise you to put vitamin E on the scar, on the, the donor scar in the back. I think that's an entirely different issue. Um, you know, some think it helps, some think it doesn't. Do it if you want. It's not yeah. going to hurt. But as far as putting on the graphs, no. Yeah. That would be my advice, no. <laughs> And then the last part of the question is, will washing my head twice per day affect the grafts or the scar in any way? And as long as you're using soap, soap and water or shampoo and water, uh, it's perfectly fine. I have read over the years that people use shampoos that don't have any impurities in it or sulfates. You gotta understand, the skin is already closed. We're not gonna let you leave the office when the skin is open. Now, it is more permeable than it was before the surgery, but every hour that goes by, it's sealing more mm -hmm. and more. We've all had little cuts on our fingers, and by the end of the day, it's not leaking anymore, it's not bleeding, it's still permeable, but it's pretty well closed. The benefits you get from washing are much greater than the possible detriments of washing. So if you have the discipline and the opportunity to wash your head twice a day with shampoo, I say go for it. Yeah, I don't think there's any harm in it. Um, just make sure that if you're within the first few days, you're washing the way the clinic told you to. Right, we don't let our patients touch the recipient area with their fingers for the first three days. Yeah. Uh, after that, we encourage our patients, almost all of them, very few exceptions, um, to use their fingers in a rotating fashion to start help breaking up the, uh, the uh, scabs and to really make sure that those suds and soapy water mm -hmm. are getting into every aspect of the recipient area. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll call that a wrap. I'm Dr. Alan Feller. Dr. Blake Bloxham. And we'll see you in the next question in the next video.